Hey folks, today we're going to talk about how to bring data from a SharePoint list into a Microsoft Word document. Hope you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and stay tuned. So, as we said, we will need three items. We will need a SharePoint list to track our new commerce employees, for example, and two libraries, one for storing the template document and one for storing the newly created documents. Let's jump right into it. Let's go to site contents, new list, blank list. Let's name it new commerce. Create. Let's give it a name. Let's call it first name. Second column. Last name. See in the line of text, say third column. We need an email address for single line text. Email address. Save. Next column will be the date. For example, the date a newcomer will join. Let's call it joining date. We need another column, let's say choice column for the device he's going to choose or she. Notebook device. First one can be a Surface, second can be a Surface Book, third can be a Surface Laptop. That's it. Click Save. We can have another column for the mobile device. Choice, Mobile Device. First one can be a Samsung Galaxy. Let's say the second one can be a Google Pixel. And the third one can be an Apple iPhone. Save. So now we need another column to use later on as a condition to trigger the automation. Select the choice, call it create document. And let's use only two choices, either yes, or no. And make sure that the default is at no. So because we want to make to click on yes. Okay, that's it. Our list is ready. Let's jump to site contents and create our default documents library. Document library, let's call it uh, doc template. Yes. And now we need another library, and this will be called sent docs. Great. Now we need to recreate the columns we had in our SharePoint list. Reason for that is because when you create a new document in a library, then you can use those columns as quick paths in the Word document. But for Word to recognize the quick part columns, you have to recreate them here as a column. Although we will not use them. So let's recreate our SharePoint list. So if you keep Elisa's name, we can use it as a document name. So we can create now a single line of text, call it first name, save, second column, last name. Save. Third column was email, but email we will not need because we don't have, want to have that in the document. We will need the choice column, which was the device. But since we are not choosing here, here we're just copying the value. We can just use single line of text and bring the same name, which was notebook device. 
click on save. Same for mobile device. Click on save. And that can be also a single line of text because you're not choosing here anymore. We're just copying the value. Let's call that joining of Daisy. Save. That's it. Our second library is ready. As we said, we are not going to need these columns, so we can hide them. I will leave modified and modified by just for tracking purposes, but we can hide file the uh, first name, hide this column, hide the last name, hide the notebook device, hide the mobile device. We can do this actually faster if we go and edit the view, but I'm too lazy to do that now. So we are done. Now we need to create the first document into this library and then we have to move it in our template library so click on new word document and let's write something like uh contoso enterprises let's make this uh bigger 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 oh, not that big bold underline and uh let's give it a blue color yeah that looks nice now let's make sure this is saved and close it. Because what we want to do to access the quick paths is open this in our desktop app because the browser does not, does not support that. So click on those three dots there, the ellipses, and select go away, select open in app. You'll be prompted with this notification, click on open word, and word should start now. So here we are. Yeah, with our Fantosa Enterprises. Let's make sure this is centered. And let's jump down, make this smaller. Let's give it a normal color and go to the left. Let's say here, now we need to put the first name and last name. To do that, we click on insert. And here we have quick paths. Click that drop down, it's a document property, and we can find here first name. This will put like a bracket with first name, it's like a tag that will be used then from Power Automate to find the SharePoint list column. Let's bring the last name as well. Let's let's call that them with their full name. Comma, enter. I'm not very creative. Let's write uh, welcome to your new role. Your now let's write the devices. So document property, your not device, and your key parts property, mobile device as well will be sent to you before the date you join, which is document property as well, joining day. Oh, well, that's right, we'll send to you a week before the date. And then at the end, let's say thank you and also enter crisis. Yeah, that looks nice. Let's make sure that's saved. It says it's saving. Close it. And we have our document. Now we should move this because this is our send docs and we don't want to have the template in there. Let's click on the ellipsis and let's select move to. On the right hand side, you can see where. We can choose where to move it to. Select our SharePoint site and then move it to doc templates over here. Now that that is done, we have our SharePoint list and our two libraries. We want now to jump to Power Automate and make sure that the documents will be populated with the data from the SharePoint list. Let's make it an automated cloud flow. We'll build in a condition so that it will not trigger any time or every time. Let's call it doc automation. And 
make use of that trigger and the condition, you should create a document when an item is created or modified. So let's say when you create the SharePoint list item, you might not have all the information in there. So you don't want to trigger the document creation with half the information missing. That's why we built in that selection if the doc creation is yes or no. Click on when an item is created or modified, click create. And first, we want to select our SharePoint site, then our SharePoint list, which is a new commerce list. Next, we want to check on that condition. So search for condition. There it is. And choose the value of the doc create document drop down. It's equal to yes. So if that's equal to yes, then we want to do the document creation. If not, do nothing. So on the if yes branch, click add an action, get file content from SharePoint, not from OneDrive. Select the site address, which is, which is the same. And the file ID is our doc template. Click on that. Loading. And there it is, document. Next, we want to create a file. So we have the file content from our template. We want to create now the new file with the items from a SharePoint list into the new the next library, which is docs sent. Select the create file from SharePoint. Choose the site address. Select the folder path where the document will be saved, and that is our send docs. The file name, I would say, can be the name of the employee. So let's put the title, since we name the title as first name. And that should be that docx. The file content is the file content from the get file content, from this one. So that's a dynamic value as well. Click on that. Next, we want to update the file properties from the newly created document. And we want to take the data that it, it's in our SharePoint list and bring it in there. So add an action, search for update file properties, select the site address, select the library name, which is the send docs, and the ID, which is the item ID from the created file. So the title, we can call, let's call it the, the document name. So for that, we chose the title from the first name. So here, we can bring the title as well. When item is created or modified, that will be the first name of the employee. But then we have to bring the first name in the first name column which will then populate the Word document. The last name. The notebook device. We need the value. The mobile device. We need as well the value. And the joining day. It's called joining day as well. Okay, so now we got the file content from our template. We created a new file in the sent docs library, the second library. And then we updated the information into that Word document. Now what we want to do is to send this document via email to the new newcomer. So let's select add an action and then get file content. This will be our second get file content. And now we want to get the content of the updated file. So let's select our site's address as well. The file identifier will be called identifier from the update file properties. Add an action and I'll send an email. And an email notification. 
the email that we use in our SharePoint list, which will be the email of the newcomer. Email address when adding inspector or modify. The subject, welcome. I'm not very creative. Body, let's write welcome note in the attachments and then show advanced options. Here we need to put the attachment. The attachment itself will be the file content from our get file content two, which is the second one populated one and the file name title dot docx we can save and let's test it bring it in test mode manually test click on new first name 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 John last name Smith Email. I will put my email address so that we see that the sender notification works. The joining day, let's say that will be the 1st of March. Notebook device, we chose a surface. And for a mobile device, you would like to have a Google Pixel. Let's leave the create document for now as no. We can save and let's see what flow does. Okay, it looks like it ran successfully. So when item is created and modified, the condition is false because we left our great document to know they didn't do nothing here. That's good, that's working. Let's try that again and set the condition to true. So let's go to our SharePoint list, click on edit. And create document. Now let's put it to yes. Let's make sure that our flow is in test mode. We can edit, test, manually test. Okay, so let's click on save. So I know it's a mistake uh, I made early on. So in the create file and send notification, you have to put the ending of the file name that docx. Otherwise, that will not be recognized. It will only have the title. So make sure you put that in the create file and also when you send it as an attachment in the attachment file name. Back to the flow. Okay, it looks like the flow ran successfully. It's, let's take a look at the condition. The expression is true, everything is green. That looks good. Let's take a look at our SharePoint library. Okay, we can see it here a few seconds ago was created. So now it's something you need to take care of. Uh, if you click on the document, you will not see the information filled out because when you open Word in the web, it cannot support the quick path we just edited in our desktop app. So to see those, you will have to download the item. Let's take a look at our email account. We should have received an email. There it is. Here is the document. If we click on download and then open it in our application, now we can see that the information we had in our SharePoint list is populated in our Word document. Because Word application can recognize and support the quick parts other than Word online. So folks, that's it with today's video. I hope you liked it. Um, make sure you hit the like button if you did so and subscribe to the channel. I think with, with such an automation, you can save a tremendous amount of time um, and uh, have fun doing so. See you on the next one. Bye.